Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to set up AWS RDS MySQL instance and I'm also going to show you how to connect to it using MySQL Workbench and perform some basic SQL queries. So let's go to AWS console and here in search bar I'm going to type RDS which is Managed Relational Database Service and here we want to click on Databases and create a database. So we have a two different creation methods, standard create and easy create. Standard create is where you set all of the configuration options, whereas easy create, it's a recommended best practice configuration, which will automatically configure most of the configurations for you. So in this, for this demonstration purposes, I want to proceed with standard create. Next, we have an engine options. As you can see, we have Aurora MySQL. Aurora on PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. In this demo, I want to use simple MySQL database. And next we have a edition, which is MySQL community. And here we have an engine version. I want to use MySQL 8.0.32. Next we have a template. As you can see, we have a production template dev test templates and free tier templates. So I don't want to AWS charge me, so I want to keep in free tier. So for availability and durability, we don't have any options. So it's disabled because we selected free tier. And for settings, for DB instance identifier, we need to give a name. So you can give based on your choice. So you can also leave the default database one. And here we have a Let's type it because it's asking us to type, let's say database one. And next we have a master username. So here also I want to type admin. So you don't have to type, you can leave the default. And also we need to give the master password. Let's say I want to give the password, but make sure you remember both your password and the master username because we will use them later. Next we have an instance configuration. So I want to leave the default burstable classes. And if you click on this t3.micro, as you can see, we have a free tier 2.micro, t3.micro and t4g.micro. So I want to continue with t3.micro. Uh, as you can see, most of the options are not uh, like enabled because we are using the free tier. And if you select the production, you will see you will have most of the options Next, we have a storage. So I want to continue with general purpose SSD, GP2, and 20 GB is more than enough for me. For storage auto scaling, you can just enable storage auto scaling. And maximum storage threshold on 1000 would be enough. And for the connectivity, we can leave the default, do not connect to any EC2 compute resource. And we want to select default VPC as well as default subnet. And for the public access, I want to select the yes because I want to have a public access. For VPC security group, you can choose existing default or you can create a new one. So I want to continue with the existing default. And for the availability zone, you can keep uh, no preference. And you can leave the other, all the configurations, including database authentication, password authentication. So we can, it's good enough. So we can click on create a database. So creation of the database will take a few minutes. So that's why I have already created uh, the database, call it MySQL DB1. So don't worry, everything is same except from the name because creation of this database will take some time. So in order to save some time, I have already created for you. So it's, as you can see, the status shows available instance role and you can see the engine is MySQL community and you can also see the region. So let's click on this database. And here you can see some details, including connectivity and security. Here we need the endpoint, which is, as you can see here, and the port. You can also see some other details. So what you can do, we can basically click on actions and take a snapshot if we want but I don't want that for now in this video. 
So one, now I want to show you how to connect it to using MySQL Workbench and perform some basic SQL queries. So for that, make sure you copy endpoint and make sure you install MySQL Workbench. As you can see, I have already installed it. Let me show you. I have to open that first. So in order to install MySQL Workbench, you can go and in a new tab and type MySQL Workbench. And here you can click uh, MySQL Workbench and you can click on download. And if you are using a Mac, you can select the Mac OS or Ubuntu. So I will put the link in the description so you can go and install it. So after you install it, make sure you copy the endpoint and then you have to open that. Let me open that here on my PC. Okay, reopen. As you can see, we have uh, MySQL connections. Let's click on this plus. And here we have to type, we have to give the name for this connection. Let's say I want to give like simple DevOps and you can leave the connection method standard. And for the host name, we need to copy and paste the earlier endpoint that we copied. And the port is 3306. And for the root, as you remember, we, it was admin. And we need to type our password. Okay. And then we can simply click on test connection. And it will take a few seconds or minutes so you need to wait and then uh, if there is any error, I will show you how to solve it. But if there is no any error, that's fine. We can proceed. As you can see here, it's showing me failure to connect. If you see the same problem, you can click on OK and let's go to AWS console again. And here we want to click on VPC security groups. And here I want to go to bottom. Here we have, a, as you can see, we have a inbound and outbound rules. So I want to go to inbound rules. Click on here, inbound rules. And here we want to create a new rule. Let's click on edit inbound rules. And here we want to click create a, another rule. Click on that old traffic. And let's uh, choose the custom and we want anywhere IPv4 and click on save rules. And once again, let's go, let's open the MySQL workbench and click on test connection. And now as you can see, it's showing me successfully made the MySQL connection. Let's click on OK and let's click on OK. Now, as you can see, we have a simple DevOps connection. Let's click on that. Let's open it. And here we want to run some basic SQL queries. Let me open it some bigger. And here I want to type some basic um, SQL queries like uh, create a database. Let's name it like students. And we can select this and click on this run. Like uh, you can see the light. As you can see, it's create a database students. And here we want to use students and we can basically select that again and then click on this. And here you can see it's now created here. You can see the green check. So we can also make it more zoom. You can click see clearly. And I want to also create a table. Let's say create a table. Let's say my students. And I want to, I want to type, for example, student ID, for example, and to be integer. And I also want to type the number of students, let's say student num, and it will be, or let's say the student name, and it will be like varchar. 255 and that should be enough so we can select that and then click on this run and you can see the green check it's working it's created table 
Now we want a description of this. Let's say my students and then select that and then click on run. And here, let me make it more clear to you. Here you can see we have a student ID, student name, and because it is a type. So that's it, that's all about it. So in this video, we'll learn how to set up AWS RDS MySQL instance. Also, we'll learn how to connect to it using MySQL SQL Workbench. And we use we performed some basic SQL queries. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.